Uh, good evening, everyone. So uh, my name is Alex Dayant. I am the map guy at the Law Institute. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so look, I'm, I, I led this research project, and um, and so really today it marks the culmination of two years of, of hard work, where my team and I, so Grace, Roland, and many others, have really like you know spent a lot of time trying to analyze and really um, measure uh, development flows in Southeast Asia, uh, and so. You know, I must admit I'm very happy this project is over because I'll be able to have a social life now again. Uh, I'll be able to have normal nights. Uh, but mostly I'm very happy to see uh, that many of you here tonight. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's really like, I mean, this is a great turnout. And uh, we had a lot of attention today in the media on, on this specific project. So, yeah, thank you very much to all of you for being here tonight. Here tonight. It's, uh, it's um, you know, it's a great compliment for us. So. Um, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to organize my presentation in three parts. The first part, I'm going to explain you how we build the aid map. The second one, I'm going to show you how it works. And the third part is uh, I'm going to show you, to talk to you about some key findings. So, well, how do we do um, the, the Southeast Asia aid map? Uh, we have collected data on more than 100,000 projects uh, from 97 de different development partners, not 70, like the minister was saying, 97. Um, from 2015 to today. And so for traditional partners like Australia, uh, New Zealand, France, or even the World Bank, we, um, we had two primary sources of information. One is the uh, OECD, um, where all development partners are required to actually report their development program. Another platform is, is called the IATI, the International Aid and Transparency Initiative, where you can find way more detailed project information. Um, but we also engage with the development partners directly. So, you know, we got in touch with the, the bank, with, with the French government and so forth. But for the non-traditional uh, non development partners, you can imagine it was a whole different story. I mean, China doesn't have a repository of all its AIDS projects in Southeast Asia. Uh, India uh, doesn't have the same either. Uh, Taiwan, uh, Taiwan doesn't have either. And so we had to adopt a more, uh, more hands-on approach. Uh, where we had to go through every um, Southeast Asian budget document. Uh, we had to go through every press release, social media post, just to be sure that we found enough information for each project to not only see that this project was happening on the ground, but triangulate this information just to make sure that those projects were a real thing. And once we had gathered all this information, we, we sent it directly to, the, um, to each Southeast Asian countries, to the aid and development units, uh, manage management units in, in Southeast Asia for them to validate this information. Um, and once they have validated this information, then we put everything on a cool little interactive that I'm about to show you now. So this is the landing page of the Southeast Asia Inmap. It, it provides high-level information of official development finance uh, at the regional level. A key visual that you will see throughout this interactive um, is the presence of those two green circles. The outline circle represents the amount of development finance committed, that is, that is like the amount prom pr promised or signed for specific projects. And on the other hand, the field circle represents the amount of financing that has been actually delivered on the ground. And we figured out that was an important distinction to make because we realized that many development partners are committing a lot, but they're actually not implement implementing that much. Um, we have collected data covering the period from 2015 to 2021, which represents the most recent years for which we have complete uh, information. And by default, uh, the landing page displays the aggregate figures for all the years expre expressed in constant US dollars. Um, on the left panel, you will find the ranking of, um, of development partners in the region. By selecting any of the 97 different uh, partners listed, you can uh, access their specific financing details in Southeast Asia. And after selecting a specific partner, you have the opportunity to explore the distribution of their development finance across various sectors. Um, we have also implemented a filter selection where you can get more specific results on the data. In this, in this section, we have also created pre-selected filters uh, for instance, looking specifically at climate development finance or looking at the footprints of non-traditional non -traditional development partners in the region. Um, so every time you select a Southeast Asian country, you can either have a look at uh, the detailed analysis we have made on this country, or you can jump directly on the project map page uh, where you will see individual projects starting to populate the map. 
when clicking, uh, when clicking on a project, um, additional information will be displayed. This includes uh, the project description, and the, se the sector it belongs to, relevant internet links, and the transaction history of this project. And from the project, from the project map, sorry, you can also narrow down your search by selecting a specific development partner or sector, and the map will automatically update with the relevant information. But you know, while we, we think this is a cool feature of the, the aid map, we have also to acknowledge the fact that um, you, know, you cannot put all type of projects on a map. You can put scholarship or budget support. And so for this, we had to actually um, broaden the scope of our ambition for the map, and we had to create a new um, analytical tool for you to be able to cut the data in the way that, um, that uh, you find interesting. And so um, the first of this tool is uh, the database page. It serves as a repository for the extensive collection of over 100,000 projects that we have compiled. And so when you click on a project, detailed information specific to that project will uh, be displayed. We have also implemented a filter box to help you, uh, for, um, to help you look for a specific project. Um, and most importantly, you can you know, freely download our entire data set um, and create your own analysis by, you know, creating, uh, cr uh, clicking, sorry, on the top left button that says download uh, the data. Um, another feature of the SAS East Asia map is a graphing tool that allows you to create trend analysis. Um, here you can select from a range of different variables that will allow you to generate the graphs that you are interested in. Um, for instance, you can compare uh, the amount of grants or loan provided to Southeast Asia, um, or the amount of development finance disbursed in the infrastructure sector versus uh, the amount of uh, money disbursed in human development. You can also, you know, add different filters. You can, uh, but you can also change the type of graph that you that you are interested in. Um, and so. We also have implemented a tool that enables you, that enables you to do a direct comparison between different partners. Uh, for instance, users can easily compare Australia's development finance in Southeast Asia to that of China. And once selected, this section provides a wealth of information on, about, about the, these two partners, including their allocation on development finance, the sectors they prioritize for financing, uh, and their major projects in the region. And so obviously you can do the same with each Southeast Asian countries as well. Yes, I like that someone likes this, uh, this picture. Could you do, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, from our menu section, um, you can access all the information on the website, notably the many uh, country analysis that uh, I've mentioned before, but also um, a series of thematic analysis on climate, on uh, infrastructure and so forth. Um, and more importantly, you can access our, um, our methodology, you can download our, the whole data set again. And one of the things you can do also uh, is actually, um, you know, have our key finding reports, but you should all have one, uh, be seated on one of them. So this is it for like the interactive. Now, let me talk to you about our key findings. Did you like it though? Nice? Yes, I like this. A round of applause, please. Thank you very much. Okay, key findings. Um, yeah, so the first key findings is that, you know, between 2015 to 2021, Southeast Asia received about $200 billion in official development finance. So just as a reminder, for us, official development finance is uh, the combination of grants, concessional loans, so loans that are below market rates, and non-concessional loans. So those loans are a bit more expensive to the, to the concessional loans, but they still have the purpose for development. So Southeast Asia receives around $28 billion per year in official development finance, mostly targeted at the most pressing development needs of, of uh, the region, such as health, education, social protection, but also infrastructure. Almost half of it is concessional by nature, uh, so meaning it, uh, it is under the form of grants or uh, cheap loans, and the other half is actually non-concessional loans that are mostly provided by China's main policy bank, so the Exim Bank of China or the Chinese Development Bank, but also by the, um, the World Bank and the, uh, the Asian Development Bank. In terms of trends, development financing has been decreasing over the years, um, mostly reflecting a diminution of, uh, in ODF, uh, in official development finance disbursed in both Indonesia and Vietnam, that together account for almost half of all the development finance going to Southeast Asia. 
And as you can see, there is a peak in 2020. So like the COVID-19 in 2020 and the reactivity of development partners means or led to like a 55% increase in, in funding where official development finance reached, reached a peak of $35 billion. So where is this funding coming from? Well, as you can see, China is the largest uh, development partners in the region, but not by far. Um, it is followed by the multilateral development banks, so the ADB and the World Bank, uh, that focus actually less, uh, less of their uh, development finance on infrastructure. So infrastructure is the, the yellow bar that you can see on this graph. And, so, and Japan is the largest bilateral traditional uh, partner of the region. So where is this funding going? Well, most of it is directed towards the region most emerging and developing economies. Uh, so really we're excluding uh, Singapore and Brunei, although you could find project information for Singapore and Brunei in our, in our map. And Indonesia and Vietnam are receiving, you know, as I mentioned before, around half of the ODF delivered in the region. So the second key finding um, is that you know, development finance plays a major role in meeting Southeast Asia development need. So Southeast Asia is one of the most you know, dynamic regions in, uh, in the world, and it has experienced decades of rapid economic growth, which have actually lifted millions of people out of poverty. And so today, one could argue that you know, the region is past the point of aid and development. I mean, especially when you look at the magnitude of, you know, private, source of in private sources of, of, um, of investment, such as uh, sorry, private sources of financing, such as you know, um, um, private direct domestic uh, domestic private investment, foreign direct investment, and remittances. But the reality is that actually those type of uh, uh, financing don't always go to uh, specific areas such as health, you know, education, social protection, and even in infrastructure. Actually, um, most of the infrastructure is financed by the public sector. And so this is why aid and development remains actually um, um, a key component uh, in, Southeast Asia, in helping Southeast Asia in filling those gaps. And actually, we have estimated that um, ODF, so Official Development Finance, is equivalent to around 10 to 15 percent of total government develop of total government development spending on infrastructure, on health, on education, and on social protection. And this can actually jump to 80 percent when we consider the small countries, the smaller economies of uh, Southeast Asia, such as uh, Timor-Leste and, um, and Laos. Now, the third finding. The third finding is that China is the leading development partner in Southeast Asia, but it's actually declining and it faces competition. So China accounts for a fifth of um, development financing flowing to the region. This is massive, actually. I mean, this is around like $5.5 billion per year uh, to the region. And an important feature of Chinese development finance is that it's going, it is delivered through non-concession loan, mostly delivered by the two policy banks I mentioned before, so Exim Bank of China and China's Development, Chinese, China's development Bank. And, um, and so a lot of this funding, this financing is going towards infrastructure. One of the interesting things that we've realized when we did this analysis is that actually Chinese financing is decreasing, as you can see, over the years. And so like there are few reasons behind this decrease, we believe. The first of them is the first of them is that um, China's economy China's economy is actually experiencing a slowdown. So there might be a, there might be um, a reason for Beijing to actually prioritize uh, its funding to like the, its domestic market rather than spending money abroad. The second point uh, is that you know China is actually uh, through this analysis we've realized that China is actually experiencing some complication when implementing its project on the ground. So for instance, I have two examples, like the, um, uh, the Jakarta to Bandung high-speed rail in Indonesia, or the East Coal Rail Link in Malaysia. Um, both of those projects have experienced actually difficulties and uh, many, many delays, some problem with land, rec land reclamation, sorry, in Indonesia. And this has been even more evident during uh, the global pandemic where, you know, international border closures and, um, and health restriction measures meant that basically the Chinese workers that were implementing those projects on the ground were not allowed in the country. And those projects have actually stalled for a little while. Um, and the third reason behind China's Chinese uh, financing decrease is um, it's actually a, a phenomenon that happens all around the world, but it also happened in Southeast Asia, is that China is providing a lot of financing, a lot of, a lot of financing through loans. And some of the countries struggle to actually pay back, the, pay back those loans. In, in Southeast Asia, for instance, Laos has already asked twice, the, twice China to push back the debt repayment uh, that Laos owned to, to China. And so we believe that maybe you know, China is actually becoming more cautious in the provision of its loans around the world. 
And so this basically, those three reasons have uh, contributed to like a decrease in Chinese financing in, in Southeast Asia. And so we believe that now like China is actually facing quite a competition, especially in the infrastructure sector. And so this is our next key finding, is that infrastructure is where the real competition is uh, in Southeast Asia development financing. So in this analysis, um, as in the aid map, infrastructure is composed by four sectors, energy or power, telecommunication, uh, transport, and water and sanitation. And so infrastructure accounts for around 40% of the total development financing uh, spent in Southeast Asia, around $11 billion per year. And China is the leading, is the leading financier uh, with two-fifths of the infrastructure development financing delivered. But what we have realized is that actually China is far from being the dominant player um, in each of the sectors I mentioned before. So if you look at this graph, you see that in the energy sector, China accounts for half of it. And that might be the only place where actually China is leading the, the pack. In transport, actually, uh, Japan is, the, Japan is the, the, the partner that spends the most in Southeast Asia. In communication, China is actually on par with Korea. Uh, and in water and sanitation, China doesn't actually play a big role. And that maybe is like, uh, translate the fact that China focuses on economic infrastructure rather than social infrastructure. Um, but when you flip the coin, uh, I think this is something you can say in English, when you look at the other side, when you look at commitments, not disbursement, well, the story actually changes a little bit. China, uh, China's infrastructure commitment averaged around $12 billion per year uh, between 2015 and 2021, which is three times uh, the amount of Japan, the next largest uh, infrastructure partner, and more than half of the total commitment of the total commitment on infrastructure. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us two things. Like the first thing I believe is that you know China is, is facing uh, difficulties in implementing its project, and that has definitely reduced its infrastructure financing. But also the, the commitment shows us that China is still ambitious and still wants to remain the, you know, the, the main um, infrastructure provider in, in Southeast Asia. Now, to my last key findings, and I'm doing very well with time. I'm kind of happy about this. Um, so climate development finance um, has increased steadily in Southeast Asia. So yeah, one of the things that we're doing in this, in this tool, and that we will be actually doing in the Pacific Aid map, so keep an eye on this, is tracing climate development finance. So Southeast Asia is one of the most vulnerable regions uh, to climate change. And so what we have seen is that over the years, climate development finance has actually uh, been increasing steadily over the years, um, mostly financed by the Asian Development Bank, by Japan, and by China. Um, and so in 2021, um, around $11 billion were spent in development finance uh, on climate, which represents around two-fifths of uh, the region mix of the region uh, development finance. But the, what we've realized also is that the outlook for climate, climate finance is mixed in, in, in Southeast Asia. And there are like three reasons behind this. The first one is that we realized that the increase in climate finance is mostly due to, in, to an increase in projects that have a significant component, component on climate mitigation and adaptation. Whereas like projects that have a, sig, a principal focus on climate adaptation and mitigation are actually flat. So that's like one of the first nuances to look, to, to look into. The second one is that with, with respect to the energy transition, we've seen that there is actually a decrease in non-renewable um, energy projects uh, in Southeast Asia. And so this is a good news. But we've also seen that actually there is a decrease in renewable energy projects. And so in a way, you know, like uh, this is coming from the fact that uh, actually energy projects overall across the board have decreased in Southeast Asia. So this, you know, it's at odd with the region's need for more and cleaner energy. And the third point is that, you know, again, in this tool, we, we're tracing both disbursement and commitment. And so, yes, like the disbursement of climate projects have increased. But when we look at commitments, which actually gives us an indication of like the future disbursement, or like, you know, the, the outlook of disbursement on climate. Well, commitment on climate finance has actually been decreasing over the years. And so this tells us that, you know, there's a risk that um, we might see less and less climate development financing in the future. So this means that, yeah, the outlook for development finance, so for climate development finance is uncertain in, in the future. So anyway, those are my few other key findings. I hope you enjoyed this. Please do visit Southeast Asia, seamap.lowinstitute.org, I think it is. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please do ask them at the end of the presentation. And uh, please, my uh, fellow panelists, come on board. <laughs>